A finished work in progress. This week, Pastor John takes another look at Romans 8 over a six-day special of Think on These Things. Romans 8, 28 to 30. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Two weeks ago on Think on These Things, we considered verse 28 in some detail. The Apostle Paul informs us in that verse that all things work together for good to those who are the called according to God's purpose. The reason why all things work together for their good is simply because of the fact that God is absolutely sovereign and therefore no purpose of his can be thwarted. The calling referred to by Paul in verse 28 is the working of the everlasting purpose of God as it relates to those whom he chose in Christ from before the foundation of the world. We may be sure that all things work for our good, not only because we love the God who works all things, but more importantly, because the God who works all things loves us and chose us and carries us through the successive steps of the salvation process. Verse 28 is certainly one of the most remarkable in the entire Bible. Paul gives us an absolute guarantee that for those who love God, because they have been called to fulfill his designed purpose, every detail of their lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into their lives. But what is Paul's amazing guarantee based upon? How in the world can he be so confident that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose? In the next two verses, verses 29 and 30, Paul explains the basis of his guarantee and the reason for his great assurance. And he does so by using five words. For no, predestinate, called, justified, and glorified. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. In these two verses, the Apostle Paul highlights the sequence known as the golden chain of salvation. He outlines the order in which God saves his people from beginning to end. This golden chain indicates very clearly that salvation is a work of the Lord from start to finish. Let us reread the passage. For whom he did foreknow, 
he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. It is God himself who does the foreknowing, the predestinating, the calling, the justifying, and the glorifying. Paul makes no mention here of God depending on human beings to make a contribution in order to ensure the success of the process. He does not say that if human beings do not cooperate with God, the process will be aborted. Paul knows that God will bring to completion every project that he begins and that he is never dependent on human beings to finish what he initiates. These two verses clearly indicate that it is not the case that God initiates our salvation and then leaves us to complete it by our good works. Our good works are important in that they serve as evidences of the genuineness of our salvation, but they cannot earn salvation or maintain it. God and God alone is the one who saves. According to Hebrews 12 and verse 2, Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith, or the champion who initiates and perfects our faith, as the New Living Translation renders the clause. Paul informs us in these verses that the first step in the salvation of a sinner is God's foreknowledge of him or her. The word foreknow is the translation of the Greek word prognosko, which means to know before. The word as it is used by Paul here means more than previous knowledge. It means foreordination. This is exactly how the translators of the King James Version of the Bible have rendered the same Greek word in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20 where Peter speaks of Christ as the Lamb who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. The word for no here refers to God's act of designating persons to the position of saved individuals by the exercise of his deliberate judgment. Let me be very clear. When Paul uses the word for no in this verse, he does not mean for us to understand that God looked down the corridors of time and knew that there would be some who would make a decision to serve him after hearing the gospel. And in light of this knowledge, he elects them. Rather, when Paul says God foreknew us, he is speaking of God's knowledge of us as persons. He is speaking of God's decision to enter into a relationship with us and to set his love upon us. The reason why sinners believe the gospel and are saved is because God chose to love them. Only those whom God chooses to love in this special way can be saved. And all of those whom he has chosen to love in this way will be saved. Dr. R.C. Sproul in his book Romans states that we could reasonably translate Romans 8.29 in the following way. Those whom he foreloved, 
those whom he knew in a personal, intimate, redemptive sense from all eternity, he predestined. This is, of course, exactly what Paul informs us of in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. He writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. God by himself, being eternal, with all power, all knowledge and wisdom, accomplishes every step in the salvation process for us. The weight of God's sovereignty is security for our ultimate salvation. Would you trust him today? Until next time, think on these things.